Now that we are on the dashboard of the Blockstream Explorer, we can see it is divided up by two metrics, blocks and transactions. Clicking on either header is simply going to filter down to what you are looking for. Starting with blocks and reading from left to right, we first see height. Block height refers to how many blocks there are in the blockchain. Each block must precede the previous block to be considered to be a part of the blockchain. Think of it as a set of Legos. The only way to get a stack of Legos taller is to put another Lego block on top of the Lego stack. But with a blockchain, the longer the chain of blocks, the more energy it requires to break it apart. Meaning the longer the chain, the more secure it is. The block height number corresponds to how old the block is. The smaller the height number, the older the block is, and vice versa. Going to the right, we see timestamp. The timestamp refers to the exact time the block was mined and validated on the network. The mark distinguishes the block's hash and allows for manipulation to be avoided. So if you ever hear the term time chain, that person is referring to what differentiates one block from another, and that is the timestamp the block was hashed at. Going further to the right, we see transactions. This simply refers to the number of transactions that were in the block. There's really nothing too fancy about it. To the right of that is size kilobyte. This refers to the data size measured in kilobytes of all transactions within the block. The size of a block varies from one block to another as there are different amounts of transactions and different types of transactions within it. Please note though that the bigger the size of the transaction, the more fees you will pay to send the transaction. The amount of Bitcoin sent in a transaction does not necessarily mean the fee is higher. It also depends on the type of transaction and how busy the network is too. Lastly, to the right of that, we see weight. This column is relatively new to Bitcoin and was added after the SegWit soft fork. SegWit allowed for new fields to be stored in a Bitcoin transaction. To properly distinguish between legacy transactions and new SegWit transaction, a new measurement type was put into place to show how much each transaction weighed. Legacy transactions tend to have more weight to them as they are carrying data that SegWit transactions do not. Now if we go over to transactions and we scroll down a little bit, we'll see transaction ID. A transaction ID simply is the identification number to a transaction. A transaction ID is 32 bytes or 64 characters long. A transaction needs to be confirmed on the blockchain to be aggregated here. Simply generating an address does not create a transaction ID. Next we see value. This is how much Bitcoin was transferred in the transaction. Next up is size. As mentioned earlier, size is how big the transaction is. Transaction size can be changed based on the type of transaction, for example, whether it is a single SIG or a multi-SIG wallet sending, how many UTXOs are involved, whether a legacy wallet is sending or receiving, how fast someone wants their transaction to be included into the blockchain, and how much Bitcoin is actually sent. Lastly, we see fee. This is the fee the sender is paying to get the Bitcoin transaction to be included in the blockchain. The bigger the weight of the transaction, the larger the fee.